It's time for the Ender 5 Plus review. Let's go. So I've now had this printer for a couple of months and I've been putting it through its paces, both with tests and also just regular printing. Actually, I've got two of these, so I feel now I've had enough time to properly decide whether or not I would recommend this machine and discuss the pros and cons so you know whether it's the sort of machine you would want to buy. Let's get the negativity out the way and start with the cons of this printer. Firstly, it's sizing. It's a very big unit, and I know obviously to have a big build volume you need a big unit, but it's bigger than it could be. The size of this printer is 632 by 666 by 619 millimeters. That's off the Creality website. And the build volume you get out of it is quoted 350 by 350 by 400 millimeters. The actual build volume is slightly different, but I'll discuss that later. And that's a space efficiency of about 19%. So you get 19% build volume out of the maximum outside space, which isn't horrific, but you could do a lot better. Now, why I found that somewhat of a problem is because it needs a big space to put it. And because of the way the printer is designed and the access to different features, it makes it quite difficult to use if you put it up against a wall. So if this was a wall here and you had to only access this from the front, it would be quite tricky to use. I have found anyway, and that's how I have one of mine set up. This one I leave uh, on an open surface, but that's a bit of a pain. So if you're easily annoyed by things, then that might bother you, but it is perfectly usable as it is. So there we go. One of the main reasons for the inefficiency of the space is this massive chunk at the back, which is sort of the designated spool holder space but the spool holder design isn't very good. It's sort of stuck in the back here and only allows you to fit a one kilo spool. Obviously, if you're doing large prints, you're probably gonna to wanna to be using two kilo spools and the standard sort of 2.3, 2.2 kilo size doesn't fit here. Um, spools are getting more efficient in their sizing, so it will fit some two kilo spools, but a lot of them it won't, which is annoying. A few of the parts of this printer particularly where the bouts are concerned, are designed in a way that encourages, and well, certainly doesn't do anything to protect part where you've got elements where the bouts themselves rub onto the metal, like here, and after prolonged use, you end up with dust falling at the bottom of your printer. The original stock extruder drive gear is all plastic, and that is just gonna wear down with continual filament rubbing through it. And you know, you could probably see maybe thousand hours use of it before it is completely worn through. And the reason this sort of thing annoys me is because it would take such a small change to counteract it. For example, with this element here, if this was raised just by a couple of millimeters, then this bout wouldn't rub on the metal and you'd have much more longevity. If you know me, you know I love my eco-friendly things and reliability and long-term use is a massive feature. If something like this just breaks unnecessarily after a short time of use, then ah, it's just irritating, isn't it? And it's, it's an unnecessary problem that could easily be avoided. Credit where credit's due though, the printer does move quite nicely. Once you've got your eccentric nuts set correctly, you get some pretty smooth movement, as you can see here smooth movement results in smooth prints so thumbs up there but we're still on cons setting the eccentric nuts on this machine is quite an important step it is on any machine but this I found quite sensitive to how they are tightened and was getting a few skipping steps to begin with where it was either too loose or too tight another problem I've noticed quite frequently is the reliability of the BL touch sensor I know a lot of people love BL touch sensors, but personally, I find them really, really annoying. I've always been someone that prefers and is happy to manually level a bed anyway. So I find them a bit slow and a bit unreliable. And because of the BL touch's unreliability and the fact that sometimes it just might not work and leave your print starting way off the BL plate, you have to watch this printer when it starts. And again, you know, this is, this is a cheap printer, so you can't complain too much, but normally, with a printer that doesn't have a BL touch, I can get it to the point where I get so confident with it that you could almost just leave it, walk away, and know that print's gonna have started okay. In the same breath though, 
even the standard end stops are a bit temperamental and I've noticed that sometimes you'll, the printer will move along and trigger before it's even touched the end stop when it's setting that home position. On the whole though, it's okay. On the subject of end stops as well, the x-axis is actually set up wrong. So there's 16 millimeters of lost spacing. Uh, it triggers here and across to here. And that distance is 344 millimeters, whereas the bed and the firmware would have allowed 360. They only quote 350, so you've technically only lost six millimeters from what is being advertised, but it's a little bit annoying particularly because you're always 16 millimeters off. The final con I want to talk about is the stock extruded drive gear that comes with this printer. It's one that Creality have had on their machines for ages and it really is crap. It's plastic, it's single drive gear, and it's just rubbish. When you're printing with a big printer like this, you don't want to have to print at painfully slow speeds uh, because your extruded drive gear can't keep up with the flow rate. So if you are gonna buy this printer, then definitely change it. I purchased one of these Bontech style dual extruded drive gears for 15 pounds, again off Amazon, and fitted it in about half an hour. But even if you had allowed an hour, it's just an absolute game changer and makes this printer a really powerful workhorse. Without it, it's not great. With it for 15 pounds, it's just brilliant. So that would be a change I massively recommended and if you'd like to see a video on how you can do that then let me know. Anyway that's the cons out of the way and I'm quite nitpicky so that's not too bad a list in fairness. Now we move on to the pros and what I actually liked about this machine. Firstly the price. It is for its size an incredibly cheap printer i bought this one at 480 pounds off amazon which is as most people will know not the cheapest place you could buy a printer i always prefer to buy off amazon because if you do get stuck with a bad one which can happen then i would rather have that security for the extra 50 pounds or whatever it is to know that i can send it back and it not be a problem secondly the movement system of this printer is really good it's a hbot design so you have the x-axis moving across this way and then two belts down either side that control together the control collectively the x and y movement and that works really nice to reduce some of the weight it's not the lightest this system could be as you've got quite a heavy 30 by 30 extrusion along the middle and quite a heavy head unit but it is bowden so it is fairly light and in fairness, the prints I've been getting off this machine, I'll show you a few in a minute, have been quite good. The most important benefit of this movement system is the vertically moving bed. The bed moves up and down. That means unlike the traditional i3 printer where the bed moves backwards and forwards like this, you're not getting artifacts introduced by bed movement, which is the heaviest part of the printer and the thing that should be as stationary as possible. So that works really well and was actually the main reason I bought this printer. Despite the less than perfect space efficiency of this printer, the build volume you get on it is actually really good. The effective build volume, what you actually get, is 344 millimeters in the x-axis, 360 millimeters in the y-axis, and about 400 in the z-axis. So you are getting technically a little bit more than you're quoted, which is always a plus. The, the glass build plate itself is 370 by 375 millimeters. So there's a nice bit of room around the outside and even at your max printing ability, you're not at the edge of the build plate, which is again, quite nice for actually getting reliable prints at your max size. I know I moaned about the BL Touch, but the other thing I really like about this printer is it's firmware's ability to finally set the Z axis. And that, when the BL Touch works, makes for really good repeatability. You can lower in 0.1 millimeter increments the distance between the nozzle and the bed, which also helps when you're changing your nozzle because you will, between nozzles, have slightly different Z heights and that allows you to just finely tune in exactly where you want the printer to home. 
which is a feature I really like. Okay, so that's the pros and cons. Before I give my final verdict, I'll show you a few example prints. We've got this one here, which is just completed. Nice, sturdy, big prints. This is a case um, completed in 22 hours with a one millimeter nozzle. And as you can see, obviously it's been set up quite well, but it's a really nice print and the artifacts ghosting are minimal, which is great. Other examples, we've got vase mode prints, which again, I think have come out really nicely and show the benefits of that movement system this printer has. Last but not least, this little Julius Caesar bust printed in 3D Tomorrow, Geo PLA, aged granite, Cotswold limestone. So I don't know if you can tell, but I would recommend this printer well, actually there is a caveat to that. I would recommend this printer if you're prepared to upgrade the extruder drive gear. Without the extruder drive gear upgraded, it's a little bit crap, but for 15 pounds and a little bit of your time, it is then a phenomenal, phenomenal printer and one that I wish I'd bought sooner. And in fact, I probably will buy more of them. I've been really impressed with it. It's on the whole very reliable, produces great quality prints and is probably, in my opinion, one of the best printers you could get under 500 pounds if you're willing to do the little upgrade, which still brings it in at 495, my purchase price anyway, you could get it cheaper. So yeah, I would recommend this printer. What do you think of the printer? Have you got one? Would you buy one? Are you going to buy one? Let me know, and if you do get one, then also let me know what you print with it. I'm always interested to hear what you guys think about printers that I've reviewed as well. Anyway, that's it for me. As always, if you enjoyed the video, do give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe. I've finally hit a thousand subscribers, which is great. Thank you very much for that. Uh, it's been a long road, but uh, I will be continuing to post more content in the future. As some of you may know, I do run 3D Tomorrow Filament, which is a UK filament manufacturer, and we are currently ramping up production. So you might see a bit more of us out and about on social media. If you're in the UK and would like to try the filament, I'd love to hear from you. Uh, we're not a big company, so all support is massively appreciated. Here's a roll here. As you can see, we're 100% cardboard spool. It's made from recycled material, the cardboard spool and uh, all of our main PLA colors are RAL matched, which means that if you're selling as a print service, which is something I forgot to mention on this printer actually, it's already paid for itself, you know, a couple of times over. So it is, it is a printer that if you're looking to print as a print service, I think is, is a good buy. But yeah, back to the filament, it's great stuff. And uh, if you wanna try it, drop me, drop me a line and uh, I'd love to hear from you. Anyway, so that's that, but uh, also coming up, other than filament, we've got the Zortrax Inventure Review, which is another great little printer, and uh, I will give my full pros and cons list on that soon. Also going to be doing some tutorials, I'm going to try and start doing a few more time lapses, and all the usual stuff really, so yeah, see you next time. <laughs>